Now Grandma Rose here. I am out here, have just come from collecting eggs, feeding my chickens and collecting eggs. And right in front of me, as I walked away, as, as I walked through the gate of, of my chicken yard, my chicken run, I saw a plant that is just beginning to flower. And I thought, you know, this is the perfect time to do a video on this. So what this is, is called Persicaria. I uh, don't know what the don't know what the genus is on this because there are a lot of gen genuses, genera. Genera is actually the plural of genus, in case you didn't know. So let me turn the camera around and show you this plant. So it, it's a Persicaria, also known as what is it? Persicaria is also known as knotweed or smartweed or sometimes lady's thumb. There's lots and lots of, of different common names for this plant, but those are the ones that come to mind immediately. So here we go, turn the camera around and let you see Persicaria. And then I will go back in the house and put up my eggs and come back out and show you some more. So right in here in front of me, now I will be able to identify this plant later, but that's not it. This is something else. But right behind it, right in here, this is the Persicaria. If you look carefully on these leaves, you can see like right down in there, so center screen, there's a little bit of a darker blotch on that leaf. And it's not on all of them. So if you look at these leaves, you don't see it on all of the leaves. But that's why it's called lady's thumb. It looks like somebody pinched the leaf and left a bruise on it. Now this is the flower. Not much of it, is it? And this is why I need to go inside and put up the eggs because it's going to take me two hands to show you this. But if you look carefully, you see that the alternate venation, and I will show you the, the stem more closely in a minute when I come back out. But here we are with Persicaria. Genus name, I don't know. It's so common, it's, I think, it, I think it occurs in almost every state. There may be a few desert states that it does not occur in. It prefers moist soil, but the soil right here where this is growing is not a moist location. Let's see if I can find some more of it. Like all around here. Right here, that's dot. And over here, that's the Comelina, Comelina communis. Right in there, Comelina communis. And I thought there might be some of this Persicaria in here too, but I don't see any of it. This is all of the Comelina. And over in, over here too, that's all Comelina. And we've done a video on that just recently. So let me go back in the house and I will come back out after I put my eggs down. Yeah, I've got eggs. We're right here behind me. I said I'd be right back. Well, I am right back. Right behind where I was before. Here's some more of the Persicaria. And you can see how it does look similar to the Comelina. But there's that blotch on the leaf. Do you see that? It's more clear on these leaves right here. I'll be right back out to show you some more of it. This is a different area back here by my chicken coop. This is actually underneath my big oak tree. In fact, if you look through there, right through there, there's my coop right back in there. But I found this plant right here when I was walking back to the house. Down to it. And this is showing a little bit more developed. I sit on the ground. And so this is this Persicaria. Now again, the scientific name is Polygonum Persicaria on this particular Polygonum. 
And you can see this is about maybe 18 inches tall at this point. It'll get a little bit taller, but not much. And we have Elvis. Hello, Elvis. You gonna move? Okay, put it down here. You can definitely see that blotch on the on the, the leaves. Here's the These flowers are not as dense as some of as they can be. Let me move this right here. And they haven't opened yet. You see that? So they're densely packed on the stem. This looks like a spike, but it is actually botanically it's called a racine. A little bit a little bit different. Very similar to a spike. There's another one. Not a whole lot to show for it. You can see the stems. If you look closely at the joints, you see the little hairs right above where the where the leaf joins the stem. It's hairy called a stipule and they're stipule hairs. And again, there's that blotch on the leaves. The rooster crow and this, the one that was just in the camera a minute ago. opening yet. So this is still early in the season. Early, early, early summer and they've started to flower. Now they'll flower until frost. At least I've seen them flower that long. Basically all, all year from the early, early summer all summer long these will be in flower. Now they are edible. It's edible both uh, both raw and cooked. Some species are extremely spicy. Now this particular species is not quite as peppery as some of the other ones. Some of the species are as spicy as jalapenos. So if you test it, if you taste it, be very careful and only take a very, very small piece of it because yours may surprise you just like that. Now this is only one species in the genus Polygonum. Many joints. So, poly, many, gonum is actually knee. So Greek, it's many knees, or we would say many joints. It'll grow one to three feet tall. It likes wet places. Now this is definitely not a wet place. It's shady. It will grow in full sun, but I think it prefers partial shade. Not necessarily full shade, but partial shade. Now, these flowers have not opened, but when they do, they'll have five tiny little petals, and it can be anywhere from white to a pale pink, white, to a brighter pink. These are kind of a pale pink, but I've seen some that are almost a charisse or a fuchsia color. The flowers are in clusters, but it's not a spike. Now the leaves are alternate. You see this on the stem. There you go. Insect damage on this too, but you see the leaves are not opposite each other. This that you see right here, that looks like a leaf, that's the flower spike. Elvis, don't do that. 
So the leaf, here's the leaf, there's the leaf, these are alternate, and there's another leaf over here. They're not opposite each other. The leaves are lance-shaped. They can be, well, one to six inches long. And some of them are very long and narrow, like, like willow leaves. And these stems, did you see, oh, see what he's doing? He's eating these. Elvis is eating these flowers. Now these stems are an example of, some of the stems can be reddish to reddish pink. Others are green, depending on the species that you have. Noisy chickens. So as I said, the leaves can be spicy. So use them sparingly because they can be very, very spicy depending on the species that you have near you. They're all gonna look similar. These leaves are a little bit wider than some, but they're all smooth. They have a smooth edge. See the smooth edge? The older leaves can be a little bit wavy. See, these are starting to get a tiny bit wavy but they're not toothed. Here's the blotch on that. It's subtle. Some of them are more obvious. Some of them are just very subtle. That's subtle. But again, a very smooth edge. What else? Um, I think I've said just about everything I can about its edibility. But what about its medicinal uses? Is this a medicinal herb? And yes, actually it is. A lot of our wildflowers and our weeds are medicinal herbs and have been used for centuries. <coughs> and used for centuries to treat different kinds of ailments. You think about it, before modern, before modern medicine, this is what people had. This one's a little bit pinker, isn't it? So what does it do? This particular one, this particular one, this persicaria, polygonum persicaria, um, is an astringent. <coughs> so it'll shrink, shrink tissues. It's a diuretic. It's been used as a poultice. It's been used to treat kidney stones. It can kill internal parasites. And some of them can be used to treat hemorrhoids, which leads to one of the common names, which I probably shouldn't say, but one of the common, darn roosters. One of the common names is smart ass or are smart. I think that's probably because it is used to useful usefulness to treat hemorrhoids and treat the nether regions. So if you want to know more about this, I'm not going to go into all the details about all of the different medicinal uses this plant has because different ones of them have different medicinal uses. But you know, to be quite blunt, Google it. Google, Google polygonum, P-O-L-Y-G-O-N-U-M. I spell out that on the screen. And look for polygonum and medicinal uses, and you'll come up with quite a list, because there are quite a number of these different, different species in this genus. So this is a good introduction to polygonum. Look at the the terminal. There we go. So the young shoot coming out of, of the tip of this. See how these leaves are flat with a smooth edge. And let's go compare this to the comelina. They're very, very similar. 
and hard to differentiate. But I think I can help you with that. So here's the Kumalina. Ants on it. So you see how that, that shoot coming out? You see how the leaf is curled? Here's another one right here. You see how the leaf is curled? So this is the Comalina. Again, curly leaf. Curl. Curl. They're all like folded or curled. And that is totally different from the polygonum in Persicaria, which is right over here. See that? See, this one's getting ready to flower too, the bud on that. But you see how the leaves come out on this are different. Overall, they look really similar. But if you look closely, the way the leaves come out at the tip are very different. So it's just a matter of looking closely. As in anything botanical, you've got to look closely. So if you look closely, you can see the difference. And you'll always remember that. It'll stand out to you and you can say, oh yeah, that's a polygonum, that's not cumulina. So bye, y'all. See you next time.